Well, I was uh, a very frequent accruer to the nivolumab trials in the second line setting that looked at it uh, in direct comparison to docetaxel. It was obviously a very easy trial to offer to patients. The biggest challenge we had was crowd control because patients were coming from everywhere to pursue this trial. And we were talking about an agent that had the promise of real activity, often very good tolerability, and the potential for sustained benefit. I treated about a dozen patients on the trial, and we have uh, one patient who I see every few weeks who is still doing astonishingly well on it, who was progressing through second-line chemotherapy after really progressing early in first line too, was on high doses of pain medication for, uh, for a, a lung cancer that was invading the chest wall. And she responded so well and so quickly that I thought it must have been a placebo effect. I couldn't have imagined that she would have felt a reduction in pain within a week of her first infusion. And that's exactly what happened. And it just kept improving. In fact, uh, she got to the point within months where she was off of her long-acting morphine that she was requiring high doses of every eight hours to the point of not even needing NSAIDs uh, and soon was living a life that was as if she doesn't have cancer, and she still is. And that is the incredible promise of these agents. She has no toxicities and lives a life that is as good as before she had cancer. And this was after she had pursued a trajectory, unfortunately, of extremely rapid progression with profound symptoms and was heading towards supportive care as the only other option. I would like to say that that is what happens with most patients, but that's not. And I think the real challenge that we have right now is trying to identify the right biomarker or biomarkers to help select which patients are going to be best served by immunotherapies with these immune checkpoint inhibitors versus other options. Uh, this was in the previously treated setting, but it's incredibly appealing to think about pursuing this as an alternative to conventional chemotherapy if we can just figure out which patients. At ASCO 2014, we saw many other trials of various immune checkpoint inhibitors, some targeting uh, PD-1, some targeting PD-L1, and certainly some ongoing suggestions that PD-L1 expression may be an important predictor, but it's not the whole story. Uh, there's a lot of questions about what is the best degree of expression to distinguish between those who are likely to respond and less likely. There are people who respond despite not having high PD-L1 expression, and we don't want to exclude anybody from the opportunity of the kind of benefit that we all hope to see. But I am very hopeful that in the next few years, we're going to see these agents become first integrated in the advanced disease setting and then begin to apply them more intelligently even into the curative settings as potentially adjuvant therapy or consolidation after chemo and radiation and translate uh, the prolonged benefits we're seeing in what has thus far been an incurable setting to actual increases in the cure rates. It's, it's arguably one of the most exciting developments in oncology in the last few decades.